Hello everyone. It is a rainy day in North Texas this morning. You know, we just go from one extreme to another. We have a week of snowmageddon and then now it seems it we have rained for days on end. So I'm I'm ready for spring. Although spring does bring a lot of rain, but I'm definitely ready for some warm temperatures. Bring on the hundred degree days. I'm ready for it. Anyway, okay, so today we have the Simon Says Stamp March 2021 card kit. Got, got a grape sucker, that's always good. Okay, so let's take out our inspiration sheet. This one is called Spring Windows, and I have been waiting for this to come. I just thought this was such a neat concept with these windows, and I honestly, I haven't done a lot of... Um, card making or creating lately because well with all the bad weather it was the holidays and then all the bad weather and it I just kind of lost my creative mojo so I'm hoping this will help spring the creativity back um, I think these are some great inspirations so let's go through this card kit together okay so let's talk about the stamp set which is always called the same thing as the card kit spring windows so you get these two lovely windows I'm really kind of drawn to the rounded top and then you get these bricks so you can kind of make like a faux wall to go along with your um, window and then you get this fun speckle pattern which could be rain could be snow so you get spring is coming sending you hugs and smiles love you hope is blooming stay strong Thank you. I hold you in my heart and thoughts. You are always welcome. Hope to see you soon. Dreaming of the day when I see you again. Hello, love. Hello, friend. Missing you and thinking of you. Spring blessings. Sending hugs. Wishing you a beautiful birthday. That's, and of course they can go over the top of those, of the rounded windows. So, fun stamp set there. Okay, so next we have beautiful die set. Okay, let's let's find the die in here. Do, 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 do. Where is my die? Where is my die? Oh, there it is. Oh, I got two of those in my box. Those are good for shims too. So I always save them and I use them for shims when I need shims on die cutting. Okay, so this is beautiful. You get the, the word and the shadow. And let's see, that is one, two, three and a half, about three and a half wide and about one inch tall. And of course the shadow is a little bit bigger than that. Okay, then so next we have 12 double sided sheets of Cartabella paper flower garden in six by six. I love Cartabella papers. Uh, they are made by Echo Park. Uh, they always are really pretty and have a wonderful color palette and designs. So that's so pretty. I love that. And then you get it. You get a bold and then a simple pattern usually. So I think these are just such wonderful colors and things. Great patterns. You get some cut aparts. And those are always great to add to your the inside to your cards. I like to add them to the left hand side of my card just to give it some more color and decoration and things. Always look at love a good gingham and a good stripe. The butterflies are just so pretty. More cut aparts but a bigger size. That's great. I like the cute hats. That's very pretty too. Some tag size cut aparts. Oh, little bees. Seeds. So every everyone has different, so that's that's cool. Okay. Next we have one package of Tim Holtz Ideology Quote Flare. Okay, so these all have different little quotes on them. And let's see. Always better together. Hope is never lost. Lucky is a state of mind. Make today count. Always choose to do your best. Dreams are for chasing. Let me let your dreams take flight. 
do small things with great love, full of wonder, always shine brightly because nice matters. Creativity takes courage. So let's take one of these out and see. So they're almost like a button. So this would probably not be something that you would put, want to put on a card that you want to mail because that would make it pretty bulky. But you could put it on a card that you're going to uh, hand to some somebody or um, just on if you do mixed media type of projects, uh, home decor projects, you could add these very sweet and lovely little things. And they have um, all sorts. Oh, there's one with a puppy dog on it. I didn't notice it when I was reading it. Okay. Next, we have one sheet of Tim Holtz Ideology Sentiments Label Stickers. So this, these are kind of like the old-fashioned where you round, it was round and you punched it. It even has that same kind of feel to it. It's, it's raised. And so everything is already cut for you. So you just have to peel it and stick it. So that's cool. And you get a bunch of words. Okay. So next we have... An assortment of three Tim Holtz Ranger Distress Markers. Okay, so um, everybody's kit will be different. So I got Abandoned Coral, Twisted Citron, and Peacock Feathers, which are three great spring colors. And I think goes really well with this kit. That's awesome. I lucked out there. Okay, you get one sheet of Simon Says Stamp Acetate. So this is good for doing shakers and stuff, and obviously window panes <laughs> for the windows. Um, one sheet of Simon Says Stamp Bellum, which it's my box got rained on, and so my vellum's a bit warpy. Um, but I am, have been very anxious to try Simon's vellum, so um, it seems to be very thick, very sturdy, I like it, so I want to see how it, it cuts and everything too. But um, hopefully the the warpiness won't show up too much. Maybe I'll put it in some books and try and flatten it out. Um, but I, yeah, I didn't know. Usually the mail lady puts my box in my mailbox and just kind of puts it catty corner, and she put it on the front doorstep, and I didn't know. And it's been raining for days on end. Okay, so next we have. One sheet of Simon Says Stamp, a uh, 100-pound card stock in Surf Blue. One sheet of Simon Says Stamp Watercolor card stock, which I have not tried that yet either. And one sheet of Nina Desert Storm in 100-pound. I usually get the 80-pound, so I'll have to see if there's really a big difference between the 100 and the 80. I mean, I can kind of feel it, but, you know, I think unless you're going to use it as a card base... 80 is just fine for layering, die cuts, and, and whatever. And this has a nice texture to it. Smooth on one side, textured on the other. But what I can obviously see from this is that it's very white. Where a lot of watercolor is has is kind of cream color. Um, this is, is very white. And so I like that. And Surf Blue is always a good color to have. And then lastly are the A2 envelopes. One of mine got a little bent. And and there are both the metallic. Their metallic envelopes are so pretty. They're always peel and stick. And so we have sea glass and metallic silver. Okay, so this is the Simon Says Stamp March 2021 card kit called Spring Windows. It is a very lovely card kit. I think that we can make some wonderful cards with it, and we will do that next. Okay, I took the two window stamps out of the packaging, and I'm going to just take my hand and rub over them really well, just to get whatever is left from the manufacturing uh, off of there so it will stamp its best. And you can tell because it'll be a little dull and a little less sticky. So just give it a good wipe down. 
And so, okay, the other thing that I've already done is I cut down the, the um, watercolor paper into just four and a quarter by five and a half panels. So what I want to do is I want to do stamp two in antique linen and see about doing a little bit of maybe some no line type stuff with the distress markers. And um, then I also want to stamp with Versafine, coat it with clear, and also use the distress markers. We can do a little comparison, see which way that we like better. So we're, since this is, oh, crushed bag of boom. Um, since this is textured watercolor cardstock, we are going to pull in our Misty stamping tool so we can stamp multiple times and get a better image. And we will start with stamping our distress inks. And so this one I am going to stamp vertically or portrait. Okay, let's get that in the corner. Okay. And I think, I think I'm going to lower it some because I want to do one of those arched sentiments over the top. And let's see if I did pretty good. Yeah, that lines up pretty good. Okay, I was looking at the lines on my lid versus the lines in the uh, stamp, and I think it turns out pretty good. All right, I'm just going to move that aside. I'm going to take my antique linen. I just kind of like to rub it over, and then I like to dab. And I think I get a pretty good ink coverage that way. Rub, 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 and oh, what is that? I think that's like a piece of my my pad. Okay, rub, 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 dab, dab, dab. I think my pad is falling apart. There's a little spot right in it. Might be because of my. Okay, that's, I think that looks good now. Okay, so now we're going to set that aside. We'll bring in another panel. And we are going to ink it up in the Versafine. Oops, let's first, let's do our magic powder. Oh. <laughs> yes, magnet, 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 and metal. All right, rub our magic powder bag over that. place, ink it up, stamp it down. There, we got a good image. this. We'll set that aside until we get the other one done. And then we will melt them both at the seam. Okay, I've had my heat tool heating up for a few seconds and now I will go in and start melting. So as soon as you see everything turn shiny and smooth, it's melted. Don't want to overdo, don't want to burn your paper. on the back, try and get it to flatten out maybe a little.
so I will probably put these under something heavy to flatten them out and I will start on those first. Okay, now it's time for the watercoloring. I pulled out a few other of my distress markers that I have. I don't have the whole uh, set of them. Basically, I've just been kind of collecting them when they come to me free in a kit. But I have quite a few of them. So I just added some browns and some greens uh, with the colors that I received in this kit. So I'm starting with the no line watercoloring images and what I'm basically going to show you is I'm going to watercolor both of the no lines and then I will watercolor the ones with the, the black outlines the same way with the same colors and everything and then you can see how they both look and so I will do a combination of putting the ink on this little uh, palette that I have here and, and that is just simply the the art impressions watercolor pal palette and then sometimes I will take the marker and put some directly onto the paper and, and spread it with the water brush. And I am using one of my Arteza water brushes. Um, I like these a lot. They have a nice point on them and they have a nice big barrel that holds a lot of water. I did all four panels and still have water in my water brush. So they... I, I like them a lot and they they come in a variety pack so you get all the sizes that you need so that's i think it ended a really good price point really good deal so that'll be linked down below along with uh everything else but this was time consuming but it was it was very relaxing so just i just sat and listened to i think a hallmark movie and uh just painted and just enjoyed the time. Um, <laughs> it's, it's so funny because when I first opened this kit, it was probably like almost two weeks ago. Well, let's see, it was today. Today's like the 11th. No, not two weeks ago. It was a little over a week ago. I'm sorry. Um, and I unboxed the kit and stamped everything out, heat embossed and everything. And the two uh, that I heat embossed uh, were a little warped and I set them somewhere and I couldn't find where I set them. I searched for them for three or four days until I finally remembered that I put it between two books to flatten them out, back out, you know, because they were a little warped from the, the heat embossing. And so I finally remembered where they were. And then I was able to color those up and get this project finished. Of course, it was, you know, in between everything else that we've got going on. But I, I did manage to, to finally get them finished. But I was, I was determined. I thought about just doing these two and, you know, finishing the video and just moving along. It was so frustrating that I couldn't find them. And then I was like, no, I've got to find these. And so I was, I like, I just got to clean up the craft room. Maybe as I clean up the craft room, I will find them. And it was, I think, day two of cleaning up the craft, craft room. I think so, yeah. And this was after all, already, you know, a couple of days of searching. Um, but, uh, or a day or so of searching. And, and then I just turned around and it hit me. Like, oh, there's where those stupid panels are. They're between those two books that are sitting on my desk. And so I felt like an idiot that it took me that long to remember what I had done with them. But anyway, I found them, got them done. And I, I really like both of them. The no line one. And, you know, I say no line loosely. I mean, to me... You can still see, you know, tell that there's, you know, definition and, but you, you can't really see the antique linen. You know, the, the theory behind using the distress antique linen is when you put water to it, it kind of melts away. Um, but I stamped it a couple of different times so you could see it in the video. If I only stamped it once where I could just barely see it, you would never see it in the video. So I wanted to stamp it where you could see it. So it doesn't like totally uh, disappear 
but it still gives it a very soft look. And um, I thought it, it just turned out really pretty. And when I added the bricks, um, I just used the color that I was going to paint the bricks and I just rubbed that marker over the stamp and stamped it with that and then colored them in. So that was uh, easy to do. I didn't use the antique linen on those. I just used the color that I was going to paint the bricks in. But uh, like I said, I really kind of like the, the soft kind of ethereal kind of look that uh, this version gives. But then I also like the other version too. The, the dark lines, I think, made it more vibrant and and everything. So it's just two different looks and... Um, oh, here I spread out a little bit of the color that I used on the bricks just to give it uh, the idea of wall. You know, you don't have to do it all the way around or anything. You just do it a little bit and it, and it gives the idea of the wall and it's just not stuff just floating in midair, you know. Um, but anyway. So I think both looks turned out really pretty. You have to let me know down in the comments below which one that you liked and why. Um, but I think they both turned out turned out really pretty, and I would be happy to send these out to uh, friends or family. As I did these tiny little flowers here, I just I colored them in, and then I just touched them, you know, very lightly with the water brush, just to kind of soften the the ink a little bit. And that is like the easiest way to do these little bitty tiny flowers. And because these pins have, you know, the brush tip and a bullet tip. So that bullet tip, you can get into little fine little details and then just barely touch it with the water and you're good to go. Looks like you just hand painted that stuff. I do think I like the colors that I chose on the rounded top windows better than the other ones, but still all oh, turned out very pretty. Okay, so here's the original ones that we did in the basically kind of no line coloring style. And then here are the ones with the black outline. These are still a little wet, so I'm gonna give these a little bit more time to dry. And then we're gonna stamp some greetings on all of these and get these turned into cards. Okay, so I decided to trim everything down by a quarter of an inch, so an eighth of an inch on all sides, just so I can layer it up. Um, so now we need to stamp our greetings on. So I will use a couple of different other curved greetings for these. And then here's this one from and from when I trimmed it down. But then I got a phone call while I was trimming this one down and I screwed that up because that's way weird looking now. So I don't know what to do with that. We'll see what we're going to do with that. But for now, let's do some uh, sentiment stamping. I think we're going to use this wishing you a beautiful birthday and um, sending you hugs and smiles. I think I'm going to use these two. I think those would be cards that I definitely can get some use out of. Okay, we're going to bring back in the Misty. And I haven't used these, so I'm just going to rub them down just a little bit with my hands just to get that whatever's left from manufacturing off of them so they will stamp better. Okay. I'm going to position this and let me zoom back out. Position this down in the corner of the Misty. And get this centered up over here Let's see how this looks on the grid of our misty Let's see if it's fairly straight across there yeah it is I think we'll go with that um, so we'll see I think we should stick in I should figure this out before. Dark chocolate. I think dark chocolate would look really good with that. So 
let's ink this up. And stamp down. Yeah, I think that turned out well. Just grab a baby wipe and clean this off. Okay, now I'll take this one out, bring the other one in, and we'll line this one up. Because this one's a little longer, I'm going to put it up a bit higher to get above that brick. Didn't do quite as well with this one. Oops, no, that looks really wonky. Okay. Try this again. That looks pretty good. All right, again, we'll ink this up in the dark chocolate. Okay, good impression. Clean this off. Boy, that dark chocolate ink stained. Okay. So there's both of those. Okay, now for these, which is really not a good place for a sentiment on these. Should I use my beautiful? Maybe that's what I'll do on these. I'll use, I'll die cut this beautiful and put it on the front of the card and then I'll stamp something on the inside. All right, so we will use our die snips to take these apart and I do this over the trash can when I cut um, it off the final side so that those pieces, or you do it into a dry baby wipe, and that way you don't have these little sharp barbs somewhere where you don't want it. Okay, got that done. Let's see if this, these will fit in my little die cutter. Oh, wonderful, 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 okay. We get some cardstock for this. Okay, so we're going to use some of the pattern paper from the uh, pad that came in the kit for the shadow layer, and we're just going to use some Nina Solar White for the word layer. Keeping it kind of soft and springy. I'm just going to run all this through, and then we'll glue it together. Okay, I did go ahead and glue the beautiful down onto the shadow layer, and right now I am just stamping in that antique linen each, the insides of each of the cards with the coordinating window that it is on, on the outside. And when I, when it comes time for that I want to send these out, then I will put an appropriate sentiment stamped over uh, the top of those windows. Um, or I do put a couple of die cuts in on a, on a couple of them, but just know that you can just stamp right over the top of that antique linen with you know some black or cho the chocolate brown. That would look good too. When you want to put your cinnamon on the inside, when you know, you know what specific occasion that you want to send these out. Okay, so I I, uh, now I'm going to do some stamping. I decided to use two of those uh, circle sentiments and I'm going to stamp those out in Audrey Blue because I thought the Audrey Blue matched with the color of uh, Distress Marker that I used on those uh, one windows with the, the teal kind of looking shutters. So I'll get those stamped and then I will cut those out with a circle die. Okay, so now I'm just putting a dab of glue where the tittle in the eye goes and I, it was still in that sheet and so I just put that that sheet hole sheet back over it and poked it through that way you know you're getting it in the right spot 
So I said, use some nested circle dies to cut those little circled sentiments out. And I thought if I just put one on that one side, that it would balance out the mistake I made when I trimmed it. And eh, it's okay. Uh, it's, I'm not super excited about it, but it's okay. Um, and I thought about popping up that beautiful with some foam tape, but honestly, I was just trying to get these done and decided that I was just going to just glue it down and not go through the extra, uh, trouble. Anyway, so I'm just going to get these, uh, card fronts. I've got them layered up with some matching cardstock and get these glued down to the front of my card bases, which are made out of Nina 110 pound solar white. Okay. I had stamped out the love you and the sending hugs in those circle sentiments. So I am just going to put those on the opposite ones for the teal shutter card. So the one that has a circle on the outside will have the other beautiful on the inside. The beautiful on the outside will have the other circle on the inside. And um, I did go over the beautiful on the outside first with my shimmer pen. Here I am doing that now. And then I will go over it uh, very lightly with glossy accents. And that will just make that more of a dimensional piece since I didn't put it up on the foam tape. And so the nozzle on these little bottles uh, just works out really good. You don't need to squeeze a whole lot. And just basically just a little light pressure and you can get a right of stream going to just go over these die cuts real easily. And for the rounded top windows, I brought in the Nuvo Crystal Drops in Soft Mint. And I thought that just matched really well with that uh, green color of Distress Ink that I used on the windows. And so I just put some uh, three dots in two corners of it, tapped it on the top of the bottle just to get those dots to relax a little bit and not have the little peaks on it. And so then I decided I wanted to add a little bit of shimmer because I always need a little shimmer. And so I just took my sheer sh spray and took the nozzle out and just kind of flicked it onto the front of the cards. And then I decided to add the shimmer pin over all the windows on all four cards. So that's going to do it for these cards. Here is a final look at all of the cards in the insides. And I will have uh, the blog post for this linked down below. And as always, I appreciate you stopping by, watching, thumbs, up, thumbs upping, uh, subscribing, and all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you soon in the next video. Mm -hmm.